All right, you're still watching. Ways now the Emo Assembly has adopted or adopted a resolution proclaiming an international day uh, for women in maritime to be observed on the 18th of May every year. And this observance will celebrate women in the industry and is intended to promote the, the re recruitment, retention, and sustained employment of women in the maritime sector. I love this day. I love this day. I love this day. That's a welcome development. I'm very welcome. My brother is um, a sailor, mm. and he actually told me that he had ladies working in the ship with him. So um, he said that they are quite hardworking and they are actually, you know, stepping up to the plate in respect of, you know, it's not just a man's terrain, but they can actually match up with the men in that space. So Absolutely. yes, I, I totally applaud this day and I am in sync with it. Absolutely. All right, so let's quickly run through what we found in the news. Gloria, I'll come to you first. Uh, my what's in the news is about, again, um, abuse. So it says a 24-year-old pregnant woman, Abigail Eguta, has been arrested in Anambra State for allegedly brutalizing her seven-year-old nephew for eating fish and failing to recite the English alphabet. The woman was apprehended after certain neighbors took the victim identified as Sunday to the Office of the State's Women and Social Welfare Commissioner. Sunday is said to be the son of Eguta's biological sister who brought to life, who brought to live with her barely a year ago. Um, this went on and on. And what really struck me here is she said, I'm very sorry. I didn't intend to blind him or beat him in the eyes, oh. but I mistakenly did. Please forgive me. It is the handwork of the devil, she said again. Um, we will keep talking about this until um, people know there should be consequences for this. And also for um, people or neighbors or people close to people who are doing this, you know, can also react the way. Because one thing that caught my attention is the people who reported this were the neighbors. So if we are very much aware of this, then it's going to reduce this to a certain extent because it's easy for people to react when they see some certain actions which are not appropriate. So we will not stop talking about this. this as long as it's, it persists, we are not going to stop talking about it. We'll keep talking about it until we drive home this message to end this sort of violence and brutality. You know, so I need to understand where this is coming from, right? Because like literally, and this is not me trying to maybe be like a goody two shoes or something. I've never really like taken, you know, I don't know how people like that's you must really have wickedness in your yeah. spirit because I've never hit anybody to the extent that I cause physical harm, not to talk of to the point of getting someone blind. blind. You know, it doesn't make and any sense reason, to me. Like I don't understand. You know, that's why we say as a teacher, there is a skill you use to teach children who are actually in that age. It's not the boy's fault that the boy couldn't recite the ABC. It was the style in which she was using to, you know, teach the boy. So she should have even found a way to actually interact with the boy to get the you boy. You don't even get what I'm style. even saying, Isi. I'm saying that this thing is innate in us. Yeah. Look at the topic we're discussing Absolutely. today. Totally Brutality. Do you understand? Know how, how do you get yes. to that point okay. where... I am angry with you, and the next thing I want to do is to cause physical harm. Like, I don't understand I don't how we're not able to be cultured, to control ourselves. Oh, like, yeah. I, yes, to be restrained, because I have never, like, it has never crossed my mind. Somebody has physically slapped me before. I just stood and I was looking at the person. Like, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to do. Like, I don't, I don't understand how you get to that point where you are so infuriated that you feel like you need to cause bodily, bodily harm on somebody else. No matter how angered you are, I don't understand. I think this thing is just something that is, is, is deeper than what we, we think, we know. I think, um, like, like we always say, we, we don't like oppression unless we're the ones doing it. We mm. don't like abuse unless we're the ones doing it. Sometimes, mm. some people would excuse it and say, oh, I don't know. I don't know I don't how I got it. I mean, yes. I mean, that's absolutely this is rubbish. The devil's work. The devil's that's work. rubbish. I mean, you, we lonely. have to get to a point where people need to be held accountable, accountable. for their actions. So I really it's want simple. to find out, do they, um, are there cases where 
things like this, you find people being persecuted and, uh, and are in prison. Because most of the times we see this on the mm. news and mm -hmm. it ends there. We don't yeah. know what happens after what. So maybe because we're not following up, but I, I'm really curious. I am very about sure that some people mm. have gone to jail mm. because of mm. these things. I'm, I'm, I, I, am, I can bet you. That's if you have a judge that yeah, understands you, yes. what they're doing. There's a, there's a young girl I saw, I saw on social media, she was celebrating, this was someone that was termed a witch. She's now in the, in the US, I think, she was celebrating her parents that came to rescue her from the hands of uh, mm. all those people accusing her to be a witch. Yeah. And all I that. I, I, I remember I, I saw it in passing, you know, in the course mm -hmm. of last week, you know, on social media, because they had already labeled this girl a witch, the, you know, all the brutality that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Let's take your story and come to you, Isi. Um, okay, so a headline is um, Buh President Buhari grants um, 65 ex-co ex members automatic employment. Um, the president today um, in Abuja granted automatic employment in the Federal Civil Service to 65 former members of the National Youth Service Corps. In addition to this employment, the president also awarded them scholarships to pursue their education up to doctorate degree level at any university of their choice within the country. Furthermore, he announced the cash price of 250000 for each of the top award winners and 200000 for other award recipients, including the physically challenged ex-core members under the NYSA Hope Alive program. Mm. 65. It is well. <laughs> Easy, please, let's move on. <laughs> my What's story it? is, um, it, it, it's kind of a mixed feeling for me. It has uh, its pros and it has its cons. So I'm going to take the headline and it says, co-joined, a uh, conjoined uh, Nigerian twins undergo separation surgery in Saudi Arabia. These twins' names are Hussein, Husseina, and Has Hassana, basically. And these twins were born in January 2022 in Kaduna. And they were joined at the abdomen, the pelvis, the liver, the intestine, urinary, and reproductive systems, and finally, the pelvic bone area. So it, you can see that the surgery is going on basically and it is going to be a long one of about 14 hours or so and we have uh, the they were able to actually do this in Saudi Arabia through the help of an NGO and uh, they, from Nigeria basically they the government of Saudi Arabia actually offered this treatment to them for free without them having to pay a dime they were actually airlifted with their parents last um, December, I think, basically. Now, this was disclosed by the um, presidential spokesperson, Garba Shew. Now, this is where this thing actually got to me because we have a team of about 35 doctors, uh, medical experts, and nurses that are participating in this procedure as we speak. While we pray that this actually goes well, this story actually resonated with me because it is coming at a time where the doctors currently in Nigeria are down in their tools. And once again, they are on strike without any, you know, because the government of Nigeria has again failed the, gov the, the doctors to, you know, do what they were supposed to do to pay them or increase the salary or do what they were supposed to do, do the needful. And this team, I can suggest that at least one or two of them are Nigerians. There is no way because we have got had brain drain of doctors leaving Nigeria and going abroad to actually do what they have to do to survive. So I can attest to this that probably we might have not just one Nigerian in this team, we might have more than that one. What stops us our, our government for, for, from actually helping the health sector currently and actually boosting our health sector well, so that this can be done. We had Dr. Yes, Aproko who yes, was yes. actually, um, he has some sort of surgery done in his head in Nigeria earlier this year. Let me say, so, um, Isi, the truth is, right, um, when it comes to medical issues, mm -hmm. right, um, it's not for, it's not just one thing that needs to be done. Yeah. 
I think Absolutely. Nigeria's problem, we need to fix everything. So because, I mean, system. you are doing makeup, they are taking it's light. A it's I mean, a is, it, is it this kind of surgery? I mean, oh, when I looked at the, the areas you said they were joined mm -hmm. at, abdomen, yes. pelvic, liver, liver, you know, that, that's a that's very, it. very yeah. critical, um, what's it called? Surgery. Precisely. Yes. I mean, they are conjoined twins that yeah. is very, it's easy to, to separate. Mm -hmm. This one is going to be very, very um, intense, the the, the, organs yes, because organs organs, 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 you know, yeah. in, in, um, amongst it. But the, so, the, the, my I mean, point is that I get your point. We, we had a, a government who we are actually stepping up to the plate. So that's what I'm saying to you that like this, this our problem in Nigeria, Nigeria is I is hydra headed. I say this all the time. So we yes. can't really just solve healthcare alone. Because there's a lot mm. that is happening. We are complaining energy. about the roads. So, yeah. We are complaining about infrastructure. We are solving energy issues. Yeah. We have energy um, light problem and all mm. of that. So it's not one problem. When Governor Respect. Fabio built the world class hospital in Aquaibom, I went to that hospital. Yeah. Beautiful hospital. Yes. He could not go there for headache treatment. Mm. Because again, it's, it's not just to have the facility. They can import all these facilities yeah. in. What happens to the, what's it called, the, what powers it, you know? What are the other factors? Mm. A friend of mine's um, older sister and the husband, they are both medical doctors. They are in Saudi Arabia. And they tell you the living conditions, how they treat them. Like, they are kings. Fantastic, you know? well. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's multiple problem. Are they ready to pay better? Yeah. Are they ready to do a lot of things? It's not just saying uh, we want to have he good health care. It comes with a lot of, you know, um, it's um, a total college. Yes, it comes with a lot of package. It's total college. Mm. All right, so my story is actually linked to our conversation today. So maybe we'll just take the video, then we'll go on a break, and um, we'll continue the... So from that video, you see that at one hand, mm -hmm. on one hand rather, some police people were um, brutalizing a young man. So the second video is actually my story. So the police inspector, I think the command, Lagos State Command, has gone um, in search for those officers that did that. So we'll go on a break. When we come back from the break, we'll have our conversation for today. Stay with us.